Right, so in this video lesson, we're going to be introducing you to the idea of counterbalancing and why it's such an important tool within psychology. If we look at the major limitation associated with repeated measures, so one of the three experimental designs you've just learned about, one of the main limitations of that is order effects, such as learning. So if we take our alcohol and driving test example, someone might do better on the second condition whether it was the alcohol condition or non-alcohol condition, simply because they learn how to do the test better. They've already had a go at it, the driving test, and they perform better the second time simply because they've got better at doing driving simulation tests. So that's a major problem with repeated measures. And there is a way of counteracting this. And this is where something called counterbalancing comes into it. This is what we're going to learn how to do now. So counterbalancing is simply a way of checking whether it's the independent variable that is causing a change on the dependent variable. And we're going to give you an example to make this seem a little bit easier. So we're going to investigate the effects of different types of music on concentration. And sometimes in the test, they might tell you exactly what you're meant to use. So they might say, you need to do this using a repeated measures test. And they'll really do that because they want you to pick out counterbalancing as a way of dealing with the limitation of order effects. So straight away, we operationalize our variables. Our independent variable, rock and classical music. Our dependent variable is the time it takes to complete a word search. So you've operationalized it. And then you start to run the experiment. So in the experiment, we've got our first condition. They do rock music while completing the word search as quickly as they can. Second condition, they listen to classical music while trying to complete the word search. And our results show that classical music condition, they completed it faster. OK, so most people in that second condition completed a word search faster. And then you've got to go into it. What do these results actually show us? So it could show us one of two things. One, that classical music improves concentration. It's been said over and over again that that can help. These results might show that. Or it shows us that participants always perform better in this second condition because they learn how to do crosswords better. They'd already had experience of it, doing it in condition one. And now, because they've had that practice, because they've learned how to do crosswords better, they always do better in it in condition two. So this is where we use counterbalancing to prevent false results such as this. So now we're gonna go through how to actually conduct counterbalancing. You should be able to use this method for any type of question that comes up in your exam if you're trying to do a repeated measures experiment. So first thing we do, we split our participants into two. And group one will do the rock music with the word search first, and then the next condition will be classical music with the word search. Group two, on the other hand, will do classical music first, and then the rock condition second. So you can see we've reversed the order that the groups are doing these tasks. One group is doing rock music followed by classical, the other is doing classical followed by rock music. And what this allows us to do is still do a repeated measures test because everybody in there is still doing both of the conditions. And what it allows us to do is to see if one condition is always better than the other. So if this first group, group one, if everybody does better on classical music, remember there's two reasons why this may have happened. One, classical music is better at improving concentration. Or, have they just learned to do crosswords better? They've already done the rock music one, where they did word searches. Now, because they've had that go at it, they're now better at doing them. And that's why they're improving the classical, con classical music condition. However, with group two, if we also find that the classical music condition improved their concentration and improved the speed that they did their word searches, then we can quite confidently say that classical music improves concentration. Because this second group did classical music first. There's no order effect of learning because they haven't had any previous experience of doing the word search. So because they've improved there and because the other group also improved with classical music, we can say it's not down to order effects and it's actually down to classical music improving your concentration. And that is how we do counterbalancing. So in the most basic terms, if you had to describe what counterbalancing is, it's where half the 
number of participants experience conditions, conditions in the order of A followed by B, and then the other half participants do condition B followed by condition A. So again, we're just reversing the order that both groups do the conditions to make sure we can counsel, counsel out the effects of order effects.